So welcome everyone. Uh, really excited to be here uh, and be able to share some of the exciting new innovations uh, we have coming out from Catchpoint. Uh, I'm here with a couple of uh, amazing esteemed colleagues. Uh, we have joining us today will be Matt Izzo, our newly minted chief product officer, uh, and Bob Ruggiero, our head of solutions engineering. So we've got a great team uh, here today to talk to you about some of the great new things uh, coming out of Catchpoint. So first off, maybe we start with a little bit on the logistics side. Hopefully you've all found the chat uh, capabilities over on the right. Uh, so as I said earlier, feel free, log in, say hello, let us know where you're from. On the left, uh, and hopefully it's the same for you all that we see, but on the left there is a uh, Q&A button. If you have questions uh, and you'd like to submit a question, you can do so right from that tab. We'll try and get to all of them, but that's just a good way for us to be able to collect the questions, respond to them. And then if by chance we run out of time, we'll be able to follow up after the fact. Um, you know, of course, if uh, anybody needs a coffee, a drink, needs to run to the bathroom, you don't need to raise your hand and ask for permission. You can just run off and do so. Uh, so feel free to uh, do that uh, as need be. But uh, let's jump into our content. So here at Catchpoint, um, really the organizations that are working with us are the organizations that rely on the internet for their business. Um, they're a digital business. Many of, much of what they do is done through digital, done across the internet. And we like to say, because so much of that and who we work with is dependent on the internet. The internet really is relying on Getchpoint. Um, and what we're planning on covering today, uh, just to give you a high level outline, is we're gonna be talking about um, what we've enabled from end to end visibility. And we'll get into that in much, much more detail. We'll be talking about our new AI powered optimization capabilities. We're gonna be getting into uh, what we've done to enhance performance and efficiency. And we'll get into how we've really increased the overall breadth of our platform. Now, um, you know, all of these new capabilities didn't come about in just a single release. We release product on a continuous basis and we do really two major launch events a year. Uh, one in the spring and one in the fall. Welcome to our spring event. Um, uh, I should have said earlier, my name's Howard Beter. I lead product marketing here at Catchpoint. And um, all of these great capabilities um, come out of each one of these individual releases. And you're gonna hear about uh, some of the great capabilities all the way through from our swift release to penguin cheater jaguar and lion now we like to talk about how the world really has changed at one point everybody was managing all of their own networks you had your own um connection to the internet uh right from um, you know your office and it was really about uh, managing and monitoring your own networks. But truly ever since uh, COVID, with the world uh, being much more hybrid, where everybody and almost every business depended on the internet, the internet's really become that new network. And the internet, as we all know, is fragile. I mean, just think about, uh, you know, at home, uh, if, you know, God forbid your internet goes down and you can't log into Netflix, what happens? Everybody in the house is yelling. Or if the internet slows down 
and your kids can't get into PlayStation or Xbox, I mean, all hell breaks loose. Um, it's worse from a business standpoint because not only does it affect your employees' experience, it ultimately affects revenue, it affects your reputation, and it puts the business at risk. That the internet depends on what we like to talk about is the internet stack. And that stack is really complex. It's made up of a number of different layers from the network to the protocols, to the core, to cloud services, all the way up to your applications. And when these things break, and they do break, and it happens to everybody, happens to the biggest, it happens to the smallest, um, you need to have visibility to it, whether or not these are things directly within your control or not. You've got to understand what's happening. And if you can make adjustments, you make those adjustments. This is why we came out with internet performance monitoring. Internet performance monitoring enables you to have that full visibility into the internet stack. So you're able to catch any issues, whether it's uh, from your customer experience side, your workforce, your applications and APIs, your internal and external networks, or your website. You want to be able to catch those issues ultimately before they become incidents. Uh, and that's what we're enabling our customers to do. Uh, we have a number of different solutions. I just kind of ran across all the solutions. But uh, those solutions are really enabled by our products. We've got a number of different products you'll hear about uh, shortly from that. And everything from uh, being able to monitor endpoints from your devices um, to internet sonar, where you can monitor uh, the global internet for outages, outages and really understand is it me or is it something else? Our uh, best in the industry, internet synthetic monitoring, our best in the industry, real-time BGP monitoring, uh, and you know some of the new capabilities that you're going to hear about from that, like tracing some of our new capabilities with web page test. Um, and Really exciting announcement that I'll leave to Matt. Um, so with that, you know, we talk about uh, Catchpoint really enabling end-to-end -end visibility. And what we're doing is we're enabling visibility from the end user experience and really where that end user is at, whether it's an employee, whether it's your customers, whether it's a partner, whether it's a friend. Um, all the way from user, all the way now into code, um, so that you can see that complete journey, so that you have that visibility you need to be able to catch issues before they ultimately cause um, incidents for your business. Um, and you know, this just displays what I just said a little more graphical, where you've got. Uh, woman trying to hail a ride using a ride sharing app that's going all the way through the internet stack and from the internet stack we now have visibility into the application stack as well and all of these elements are correlated together so we've got that visibility from let's say where she is in san francisco all the way through to your application and now I'm going to turn it over to Matt and let Matt uh, really dig into the details. So over to you, Matt. Thank you, Howard. Um, uh, I'm Matt Izzo. I am Chief Product Officer at Catchpoint. And I'm really excited to talk to you about some of the things that we've rolled out over the past uh, few releases. I think if you remember the slide that Howard showed earlier, had a number of releases uh, really since our last um, uh, launch webinar. Uh, back in October. So I'm going to summarize um, as much as possible as that is all of the things or at least some of the highlights of things that we have deployed uh, and rolled out um, you know, from, from the end of last year all the way up to just Monday. 
So uh, the first thing Howard showed in that previous slide, uh, and he, he spoke about being able to uh, peer down from customer experience, um, which has long been the core of, of what we have done, um, looking at customer experience from real locations out there in the internet, through the internet stack to see what's the health of the services that you rely on in the internet stack, um, and now down into your application itself. Um, that is possible today, the application part, with Catchpoint tracing. So today, you can view your applications, you can view your traces, um, the performance of them, uh, errors, uh, the, the, the traces, the spans, the architecture itself, um, where errors occur, and even drill into the code um, itself. Uh, that is um, uh, that's possible today through open telemetry. Uh, that's one of the differences with catch point tracing. Uh, certainly, we know there are other tracing applications out there. Many of you are already using tracing applications uh, in a variety of ways. Most of today's tracing from companies that I speak to um, are, are server based. So you're deploying an agent in servers and uh, you know that scales with how many servers you have, how many containers, how many gigabytes per hour you're storing and so forth. Um, catch point tracing is uh, uh, much simpler than that. It is open telemetry based, uh, open telemetry being that, that, that uh, standard that the industry is rapidly adopting. And, and one of the purposes behind that really is simplicity and vendor ind independence. So uh, if you're using open telemetry, an open telemetry based solution, you simply deploy the open telemetry SDK we don't care how many servers you have, how many containers, how many gigabytes per hour of memory you're storing. You deploy the SDK and you can send that telemetry, uh, the tracing data to Catchpoint or frankly, any other open telemetry uh, um, supporting solution that you have. And that's one of the, that's one of the values that, uh, that we provide with that. Um, it's full code level drill down um, into the application. Now you might you might uh, be familiar with uh, this chart. This is from Explorer. If you're if you're a Catchpoint user, you probably use Explorer an awful lot. This allows you to slice and dice your data. Uh, so this is a chart of um, largest contentful paint broken down by um, by release with the trending line. So in in this case, this is an example of looking at the the impact of one of your core web vitals. Um, of, of each release. And as you can see, um, you can click on any one of the points in the graph and you can drill into things like the records, alerts, or into the trace itself. Um, so that is that is an example of drilling directly in um, from, from your synthetic tests to tracing, which is natively integrated in with Catchpoint. So, one of the reasons why we felt it was important to uh, deploy a tracing solution natively integrated with Catchpoint uh, really is because um, in order to get the level of, of, of observability that you need, you need to be monitoring from real locations. And if you're going to connect the, the service performance that you're monitoring from a customer experience perspective, you need to be monitoring that out from real locations, real cities, on real ISPs, collecting the kind of metrics that we collect. Um, that's what gives you that real uh, vision of customer experience. And then if you're running tracing at the same time, you're able to see what is the actual trace for a known proactive uh, predictive um, test or set of tests that you're doing. So it provides that level of, of visibility um, into in, in all the way through the application, um, through the internet stack into the application stack as well. Uh, calling back to that uh, that that um, uh, visualization that Howard had earlier. Now the Catchpoint's node network, we it, we are constantly working on expanding. I think when we gave this webinar last October, this was at about 2,500 vantage points. Since then, we've added uh, 200 um, new locations. It's constantly evolving. Um, in fact, I'd say if there are any, any locations, any cities, any countries that uh, you have a specific interest in, you need better coverage of, 
Uh, we're always interested in hearing from customers in terms of what are your needs because we are constantly evolving and growing this network. So let's let's move on a little bit to some of the other things that we're doing just in terms of um, monitoring the internet stack and pulling everything together. Uh, this is internet sonar. If you're familiar with internet sonar, you know this gives you a, that, that live global view of internet outages for the services that you depend on, things like CDNs or DNS, SaaS services, social media, MarTech services, um, and recently added um, ISP and network outage detection. The reason why we view this as important is, as Howard showed earlier, most of the services that, you're, that your services rely on in the internet stack, uh, you don't own them anymore. They're not in your data center. Uh, you don't have visibility into them. You can't deploy agents on their servers and they're certainly not sending you log data. So how do you know um, if they're down? Uh, maybe more importantly, if your service is down or just has poor performance and you know, we've been saying for many years, slow is the new down, really slow is the old down anymore, uh, I think. But the thing is, if your service is impacted, how do you know if it's you or someone else? One of the first things in, in triaging is localizing that problem. And the first part of localizing the problem is, is it me or is it someone else? So we're able to test these services um, uh, uh, across the globe, across the internet. We're pulling together uh, a billion metrics a day um, and correlating that to the services that you're running tests on. So we're pulling that information together and we're, we're telling you through internet sonar whether or not there's an outage and if it's impacting your services. Um, of course, this is a very interactive uh, graph right here. I often show the, the spinning globe because uh, that's sexy to look at, but um, you know, really, I think one of the one of the coolest things about internet sonar is not the eye candy, but the fact that when you're going to get an alert, you know, someone is going to get an alert saying, "Hey, your service is down, or your service has poor performance." And by the way, if that is correlated with an outage that we detect across the internet, whether it's a CDN or a DNS or a SaaS application or a network application, um, it'll tell you right in the alert. By the way. We found an outage. You can click here and go and, and check that out. So that is that you know, immediate sense of, is it me or is it someone else? And of course, you can, um, uh, uh, you can uh, drill into this and uh, um, make use of this, this dashboard, these dashboards in a very interactive way. So, in addition to that map view and the, that, that, that I just showed and the globe view that, that uh, I mentioned, the spinning globe, uh, we've added a network map view. So this allows you to see uh, easily right here, what are the network outages that are detected over this time period. Um, it shows them grouped by destination, by hop, uh, by source, um, the IP address, ASN location, or both ASN and, and location as you see from that dropdown. So we're pulling all this information together because we're monitoring from all of our public nodes. Um, we have data from those public locations and we're also running synthetic tests uh, to um, a large set of other city, other ISP, other networks, um, DNS, CDN, cloud services, and so forth. Um, all to provide you that, that uh, view um, from the map or location view and in this case, from a network perspective. And of course, this also is interactive. You can click on any of those, those cards or, or any of the, um, the points on the, the uh, network map to get more information about it. So one of the other things that we had added um, to Sonar is information from vendor status pages themselves. If there's a corresponding um, if, if the vendor of a corresponding outage has information on their status page, um, you can see it right in Sonar and, and even get a link to it, uh, to that vendor status page. Um, one point I, I wanted to make actually on the previous slide went where you can see those various outages. You know, um, I look at internet Sonar all the time and just about any time on any day, 
uh, I will see um, outages on even the biggest, most sophisticated companies. Uh, you know, we don't call people out, uh, but the fact is that it's not a matter of if there's an outage, it's when. Some of the largest, most sophisticated um, IT technology companies, they're, they have so many services offered in so many locations, so distributed. Um, the fact is um, there are outages. They're not always their fault. It doesn't matter why. The fact is somewhere around the world, you're gonna have trouble getting, getting access to a CDN or a DNS or a cloud service or a MarTech, an ad tech service. Um, and you're gonna see them from top name brands. It happens. It, you know, it's not a matter of, okay, only a small company will have outages. They're all over the place. Okay, internet stack map. Um, this is something that we're really excited about. Um, this is now, uh, as of the release on Monday, G, uh, GA, generally available. So if you think about this, internet sonar provides you with a view of outages across the internet that affect your services. Stack map is kind of the, kind of the, the flip side of that coin. Stack map shows you that live view of the health of your digital service and the health of the, of the third party services or even internal services that you depend on. So we'll auto discover some of the key internet services that you rely on, things like CDNs and DNS, will automatically place them in, in layers on the map, layers like uh, front end services, DNS and so forth. Um, you can easily customize that, move things around in a drag and drop fashion to get that map to, to, um, uh, to, to look the way you want. Um, but much of that discovery is done uh, automatically up front. very simple wizard to, to set this up. And very quickly, you're seeing uh, a live view of the issues that affect your key services and applications. Um, it's powered by sonar, so any outages that we find uh, throughout the internet that impact your services, services that we discover and will place on this map, we'll also show them, for example, with an alert badge or um, uh, 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 an orange or red border around that service. So your service being at the top and everything else being in layers, you have a, a, a very quick, easily at a glance view of what's the health of your service and hmm, if there's a problem, uh, is there a problem with my cloud service, a backend service? Is my one of my ad services down? Do I have a problem with a backend service like a database um, and so forth? Um, if I were looking at this map, I'd be looking at the, 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 the leaves on the tree to see, um, okay, are there, are there problems that on services that I depend on? And I'm gonna look at those first. So very quickly, not only is it me versus someone else, but this is a, a, an interactive map of your internet stack, the stack of services that you rely on across the internet to provide your service uh, to your customers. And of course, just like uh, Sonar, this is highly interactive. You can choose different time frames. Um, we don't limit you to you know, just, the, just the last uh, few hours or anything. Um, you can go back in time. You can click on any of those cards. You can see what's the health of the service a layer, see the individual test that you're running on too. So this is, this is a very, very powerful tool. Um, there isn't anything else like this out in the industry. There certainly are application stack maps out there from tracing um, that is, that is uh, um, uh, not particularly new, but from an internet stack perspective, uh, in order to have that, you need to be able to monitor services through the internet stack from real locations around the world. And that's something that, that uh, Catchpoint is, is best at. So, hey, Matt, just a quick question. Sure. So if an enterprise, if one of our customers has five or 10 different key apps or services that they're using um, and different maybe different app owners in different locations around the globe, do they, are, they, are we able to provide a different map for each one? Sure. Uh, Howard, you're being my straight man today because I, I, I probably should have mentioned that. But That's yeah, why I'm here. 
you can set up um, tag team partners. Um, you can set up um, multiple internet stack maps. Uh, these these go into your dashboard collection. You can have dashboards in folders and easily see them in Catchpoint. Um, for those of you who are familiar with that, it's a very flexible, very powerful capability. Um, and just next, just like you can have custom dashboards to show tiles or charts or what what have you, um, you can have a stack map um, defined, and you can have as many stack maps um, as as you wish. Uh, up to the limits of um, uh, of your dashboards. So if you have five applications, you can set up five stack maps. Each one can be completely different, each one live, each one interactive, showing you uh, the not just the components that you rely on across the internet for your for your uh, service, but their health. Um, and, and another point before you ask Howard, I'm, I'm uh, I'm, I'm foretelling the next question that you have. Um, it's not just the, the services out there in the internet. You, you see at the bottom of this, there are backend services. If you have internal services that you're monitoring um, with enterprise nodes behind your firewall, those can easily be added here as well. And um, sneak peek to a, a future capability um, will be integrating um, uh, tracing into this as well. So that will also add um, to that full visibility from your customer experience point of view, um, all the way down through the internet stack, um, your, your internal applications as well. All right, I think with that, we're going to see uh, an actual live demo um, of some of these cool capabilities. Go ahead, Bob. All right. Thank you, Matt, and uh, thank you, everyone, for joining today. My name is Bob Ruggiero. I lead the solution engineering team here at Catchpoint, and I'm really excited to be here today to uh, show you live some of those new features that Matt just talked about. Um, so to kind of kick things off, I always like to start with a, a reminder of our global observability network. Matt mentioned this earlier. It really is uh, this network that enables the development and the release of features like Sonar, like Staff Map. Uh, this network is really the fabric of, of everything that we do. So the fact that we have nodes across all corners of the globe covering different ISPs, transit providers, um, located on the backbone of the internet, last mile, cloud, mobile, uh, this enables our ability to detect issues that impact services uh, across your internet stack. So what Sonar does is it provides a visualization that shows all of those third-party services that are experiencing outages that might be impacting your applications and ultimately your customers. So services such as CDNs, um, you know, DNS providers, cloud providers, uh, SaaS applications, marketing technologies, you can see this really extensive list of third-party services that we are monitoring and identifying outages, degradation that happen literally in real time. So this nice spinning globe here that you see shows us different outages that are happening across the globe as we speak. And as Matt said, what I love about this, uh, especially in my role as a, as a solution engineer, Anytime I want to do a demo, I know that there's going to be something that's happening out there in the wild. So there's always something you know, going on that, that we can show. Um, this is that global visualization. Now, one of the, the, the questions that comes out of this is, okay, well, it's, it's great that you detected an outage with a particular CDM or you detected an outage with a cloud provider. Does it actually affect us? Does it impact us? So a lot of you that are on the call today may have um, you know, some synthetic testing that you're doing through Catchpoint already. I can click on one of those outages and it will immediately let us know if there's any tests that we've developed that were impacted by this. And then from there, you can start to drill down and, and investigate a little bit more deeply. Matt also mentioned the network centric view. So here you can see those different ISPs and providers Right, that are delivering content across the internet, we can see where any potential issues and outages are happening there. 
So it's a really powerful view into all of those third-party services, uh, apps that you rely on as an organization, which ones are having problems, and more importantly, is it affecting the services that, that you're developing? Now, one of the other workflows that I wanted to walk through here is this is all good, but very rarely will you have kind of an operations engineer or IT hands on glass or eyes on glass looking at a dashboard like this throughout the day. More often than not, where this troubleshooting process begins or originates is through some type of synthetic alert that you've uh, set up within your existing testing. So when you have an alert that is triggered through a synthetic test in Catchpoint, one of the first things that the folks responsible for troubleshooting this are gonna do is determine, is this a problem that I need to fix or someone you know, within our organization needs to fix? Or is this a problem that's impacting uh, a third party service? And maybe we have to reach out to that vendor to help troubleshoot and uh, find a resolution. Immediately, when you get that alert in Catchpoint, it's going to tell you if there is a third party outage that was detected by sonar. So right away, without doing any digging or any investigation, no need to get on a war room call and have folks all talking, all right, who's going to take you know, responsibility for this? We can bring in the right folks that you know, own that relationship with this vendor, get them on the phone and start you know, talking through any potential solutions uh, with the vendor directly. So really, really powerful, speeding up that mean time to detection, speeding up that mean time to resolution. So, so Bob, a, AI powered correlation. AI power correlation, yeah. So all of the, you know, we, we identify all of the services, um, all of those dependencies in your synthetic test. We know what's running that powers your applications. And if there's an outage detected by sonar, right, we're automatically going to correlate those two together. Very cool. So once you have identified a, a particular service or uh, an issue, the question now becomes, OK, well, are there any other dependencies that might be affected by that outage? That's where StackMap becomes really, really powerful. So what we're looking at here is a visualization of one of the demo applications that we use as, as part of the SE team. It's a, 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 an online movie uh, ticketing you know, type application. So we've built out this stack map. And what it does is it shows all of the different layers of the technology that drive that app from you know, DNS servers to uh, front end CDNs, origin servers. And ultimately, all of the third-party um, you know, tags and services within that application as well, whether it be a tag manager, advertising, um, social media, all of that is identified by our stack map and put onto this map. So immediately by looking at this map, I know which problems or which layers of our technology are negatively impacted and what services uh, are impacted as well. So if you remember back on my alert screen, we saw that there was a problem with this generic cloud, right? We run uh, a portion of our application from this particular cloud provider, and that was you know, generating a failure, which we identified. You can see how it's you know, kind of highlighted here in orange. We also find that there's an outage related to AWS. Now that outage, impacts some downstream services as well. So now I have a full view into all of the affected dependencies and I can focus my investigation in those areas. So let's go through uh, that workflow here real quick. I'm gonna click on this last service, which is our back end. It opens up a blade here on the right that shows us which service was affected. I can look at my tests and I can click into any particular failure that occurred and it's going to bring us back to a similar view that many of you you know, probably leverage already today which is our record screen so we keep three years of data you know by default still the industry leading 
uh, data retention policies, but I can click into any one of our, our test records and get a further drill down of what happened during that test run. In this case, we see we had an unauthorized message. Now that's nothing that is unique to what Catchpoint has done historically. Any one of our synthetic tests, we've always been able to identify you know, where a failure occurs, um, what the status code is, uh, what the error message was you know, that was returned to the user. But now what we've done is we've enabled that next level of investigation and really enable operations, IT operations team to go a step further. Instead of handing off this 401 to a development team and saying, hey, you go find out what's happening. As an operations engineer, I can now view that trace and as I view that trace, it's going to open up our new tracing capability where we can see all of the distributed architecture, the dependencies of each of those services, and start to look at where those failures are happening and even get down to a particular method call, excuse me, method call where that error occurred. And I can step through our code so we have a point in time visualization here that will actually take me to the line of code where that failure occurred. So now as an operations engineer, IT ops, I might not know what to do with that code failure, but I've narrowed this down to one specific line. I can hand that off to our development team and they can focus their investigation a lot more quickly. So really, really powerful. It is that end-to-end -end visibility starting from you know the point of view from your users across the internet stack and then into the distributed application stack so i know that was quick uh, hopefully that gives a view into some of the the capabilities that matt just showed uh, or talked about uh, what i want to do now is hand it back to matt and uh, he'll talk about a lot of the other new exciting features that we've released over um, you know this past couple of versions matt back to you Thank you, Bob. I'm going to reshare the slides. All right. Um, just a, a couple of points. One is stay tuned. Um, a lot of the things that we're showing today, we're still making big um, uh, improvements to None of these things, you know, we're not done at Catchpoint. Uh, our, our pace of innovation is pretty fast and uh, um, we continuously uh, add and improve capabilities. So stay tuned to those. There was a quick question in terms of, um, I believe for Sonar is via AXP on our monitored list. Um, I don't believe it is right now. I'm having somebody uh, double check, but we are always adding services and capabilities. So if that's something that you're interested in, if it turns out that we aren't, um, we have added capabilities um, based on requests and, and uh, um, what's, what's visible out there in the internet. So uh, that may be something that, uh, that we can consider. Uh, if I get an update to that answer as we're, um, as we're presenting, I'll let you know, but thank you for the question. Okay, so let's look at some of the other things um, there's really so much to cover. I can't do full justice to um, everything that we've rolled out over the, the past few months, but web page test certainly is an important uh, part of Catchpoint. Web page test, we think of as really the gold standard for um, uh, developers as a, as a tool for uh, testing your websites um, in the development stage. And we are very happy to announce that uh, web page test as an instant test is now uh, available in the Catchpoint portal. Um, scheduled web page tests are available, have been available. Now the instant test is built in um, natively uh, in, into Catchpoint. So now you have a common platform uh, between roles like SREs and web developers rather than using different tools or um, any kind of swivel screen. Uh, swivel chair monitoring, uh, you can see things in the same common platform. Some capabilities, uh, a couple of the uh, capabilities that we're uh, very excited about that web page test offers, like um, opportunities and experiments and carbon control to see the 
um, the, the carbon footprint uh, of, of a web page. Those are coming in an upcoming release. So um, stay tuned, uh, they'll be available soon. Now, um, you, saw, you saw records, the waterfall records uh, that Bob showed. Waterfall records, you know, that's something that, that uh, um, our users rely heavily on. Uh, we view that as the, uh, you know, find the needle in the haystack tool. Records compare, I think of as, well, finding a needle in a field of haystacks. Often, uh, you need to compare different test runs, whether it's a before and after, whether it's a, um, a browser test on uh, one type of browser versus another, whether it's testing from different locations, the ability to see on the same page, side by side, multiple test runs, in this case up to four, um, that's important. This is a, a, a very powerful, very easy to use feature. You just click on uh, um, records compare, you choose the records you wanna show. It's just like a shopping cart compare feature. Um, it's very easy to use. And again, um, very powerful. Uh, we, as it says here on the slide, uh, like a code diff tool for the web. So when I say I'm very excited about rum, it's, it's not the drink. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a, a vodka or bourbon person if, if we're going there. Uh, but real user monitoring, uh, we're, we're doing a lot with real user monitoring uh, this year. The first thing that we're rolling out is a completely brand new redesigned smart board for rum now in preview. Um, and in preview as of just Monday. So this gives you, a, as, a, as it says, an at a glance view of the summary metrics, web vitals. Uh, you can view location information, device, network information, errors data. This is a great place to go uh, to see uh, what is the health of your, uh, your website that, that you're monitoring with uh, real user monitoring, uh, troubleshoot problems and diagnose them. Um, there's also uh, automatic trend detection, which we something that we've had in our smart boards for a while. All that high-powered correlation um, analysis and trend detection. You know, we don't often talk about that, but the behind-the-scenes analytics that Catchpoint uses is, has always been very, very sophisticated. Uh, so that level of um, uh, trend detection and trend shift detection is built in. Um, and there's a very cool interactive scenario estimator tool that you could go in and see what happens when page view increases, uh, what happens to bounce rate, for example, um, or when page view doesn't, that, that wasn't the best example, but let's say largest contentful paint increases um, or other, other uh, um, metrics that you're monitoring with RUM. Just a couple of more things that we wanted to point out. Playwright and Puppeteer also, um, not a small thing. All right, Playwright and Puppeteer, these are cross browser tools uh, for, for automated modern uh, uh, web browser testing. Uh, we view these as, as more future proof, if anything, uh, because these, these were developed by, um, these tools were developed by Microsoft and Google. A playwright by Microsoft and, and Puppeteer developed by Google. Actually, we had polled a number of our, our users to see, well, uh, if you had one to choose, would you be, uh, would you prefer to use Playwright or would you prefer to use Puppeteer? And it really turned into very much of a, an iOS versus Android, um, Coke versus Pepsi uh, question. So that in the end, we, we decided, well, we've got to support both. These are a cross-browser um, compatible, so it's an easy way of uh, running tests, transaction script tests uh, on web, a variety of different web browsers uh, using familiar tools. And uh, if you have a Playwright or Puppeteer script somewhere else, it should work perfectly fine in Catchpoint in the Playwright and Puppeteer um, transaction uh, tests that, that, that you see here. Uh, there are available script recorders from these companies. You can use those as well. Um, and uh, they support things like pop-ups and multi-tabs. I know those are capabilities that uh, a lot of our users um, are interested in. And uh, we also have rolled out a feature that 
uh, allows you to convert a test type from one type to another. If you convert a, a Chrome test to Playwright or to Puppeteer, well, the scripting language is different, so the, so the script itself um, uh, uh, would, would have to be modified, but the ability to convert those tests gives you the, a level of portability that you hadn't had before. And last, but, but definitely not least, um, along with our uh, uh, Google Cloud partnership, GCP partnership, um, we had provided the ability to very easily set up test suites for monitoring some of the, the, uh, the core Google Cloud platform services like BigQuery and so forth. So this is a, um, a very simple and quick way of creating a set of tests, a suite of tests, if you will, uh, for monitoring something like BigQuery. You enter in the parameters, you click create, and it will automatically create multiple tests for you in a combined folder um, in that suite, things like a web test, a DNS test, a network test like ping. Um, and all of that is, is uh, very easily created and packaged um, as, as one. So this allows you to um, quickly make use of these services uh, and set up tests for them very easily. Okay, we covered a lot of ground, didn't we? And, and still there are other things um, that, uh, uh, that we didn't mention. So maybe this is a good point, Howard, if you have anything um, yeah, else the, you'd like to add, I'll stop sharing yeah, Matt, the, uh, the slides. Matt, no, leave the, leave the slide up. Matt, okay. thank, you for, um, thank you for all of that. And Bob, thank you for the great demo. Uh, we do have a few questions here. So one of them is, uh, Matt, I guess for you, um, for tracing, can you support Kubernetes? Yeah, we're independent of that. You you deploy you deploy the SDK um, into your app, and it doesn't matter what you're on. Uh, that data will come to Catchpoint, and um, we can support those traces. Awesome. And then we've got one for for Rum. Uh, do you prefer Myers or no? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the question was, I shouldn't was, have opened up that door. <laughs> um, the question was, can you elaborate on how RUM is implemented? So how, how RUM is implemented. So RUM, RUM makes use of uh, uh, often called a JavaScript tag. You deploy that tag, which is a very easy thing to do. If, you, if you're running a service on a website, you've already got tools that are deploying tags. Um, you deploy the catch point tag. Uh, and that, um, that tag will then ensure that information about the performance of your, uh, your web page, uh, interactions that your customers, your, your users take, that gets collected by Catchpoint. Um, we do not collect uh, PII, we're just collecting performance information. And all of that performance information in terms of core web vitals, um, page views, uh, you can, you know, that's where you would look for things like um, what are my most visited pages that have the worst performance or what are the pages that generate the most revenue or that have the most bounces um, and so forth. Uh, we are adding. So anyway, that's um, I could go on. Um, it's that yeah, rum JavaScript great. tag that yeah. that uh, supports um, that that supports a rum capability. And that's pretty much industry standard how that works. I will say and with then, Rum, we're, we're adding um, another sneak peek. We're adding frustration metrics. So rage clicks and thrashed cursors and things like that, um, uh, as, re as well as a crux report. Uh, stay tuned. Those will be coming to uh, our Rum solution in terms of um, the new smart board soon. Oh, awesome. Uh, as far as... Um... One other question on, on the marketplaces, Matt. Uh, is Catchpoint available today in uh, any of the big uh, Cloudvisor, Hypervisor uh, marketplaces? Yes, we are available today in AWS. We will be available on GCP. Um, what day is today? Uh, today is Wednesday. Um, well, we'll be fully, fully available 
um, uh, I expect this week, um, really in a matter of in a matter of days. Uh, so that's coming. Awesome. We're very excited about that um, as well because we know that uh, a lot of our uh, customers make use of those um, those marketplaces. Um, and then uh, uh, Azure won't be too far behind. Great news. Thank you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna push out a poll. Uh, so the poll should now be open. If you visit the polls tab, uh, I think you should be able to all kind of answer questions on that poll. Uh, so please take your time to do that. I'm gonna jump ahead. Uh, so you heard a little bit about and saw the demo of uh, StackMap today. We're going to get into a much deeper dive on StackMap uh, in, on June 12th. Um, uh, scary enough, that's only a few weeks away. Can't believe it's June, almost June already. Um, uh, so uh, information will be shared uh, in the chat. So please register now um, and check that out. Uh, this will also have uh, a live expert panel. And uh, hopefully we're going to share uh, some great information on even how we're leveraging this uh, at Catchpoint. Um, uh, so, you know, I definitely want to thank you all for your time today. Uh, feel free to request a demo, to check out the demos on catchpoint.com. We've got all sorts of uh, de demo walkthroughs and demo videos and all sorts of content. Um, but we appreciate you taking the time uh, to spend with us today. I'd like to thank uh, Matt and Bob for their time as well, as well as the whole crew behind the scenes putting this on, Kelly, Janae, AJ, uh, Leo, Shri, uh, everybody that's helped make this uh, hopefully a great success for you all. Uh, thanks again, and uh, we will uh, hopefully see you all shortly. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone.